What's going on guys and welcome back to the most spectacular read through of all times. I am the big cliche. I am big uh, Papa Pump without the pump. I am the rock that is never hard. King Kong got a lot on me. I am T B R Terabyte Reacts and I would just like to say you're welcome. Welcome back guys to another read through of the one and only one of the greatest mangas to have ever been written or drawn Berserk 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 Oh my god here we go once again you already know what we're gonna do first we already you already know i know it's been a while guys don't come at me you know if you stick around the channel not just for berserk you know what's been happening and why um berserk has not been out for a while okay um stuff happens um you guys know i enjoy this this manga so it's you 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 can't say that I'm not enjoying it. That's why I'm not uploading it. Rethroughs. Uh, I mean other than that. Rethroughs are not exactly something I could just pop off. Pop off. It takes time to do rethroughs. You know what I'm saying. It takes time. And I really do appreciate you guys for sticking around. The ones who have stuck around on the Patreon. To still get these <clears throat> manga rethroughs. Even though. You know. I, I just don't understand. Um, it seems like people don't really care. <laughs> to be honest but in any case man for all you guys that stuck around i really do appreciate it <clears throat> you know i'm out here i'm still trying to put out content during these quarantine times um so let's go back and review volume 14 of the berserk manga that is where we're at we're going to be doing volume 15 today but you already know, we do a review of the previous chapter just to catch up so we know where we're at. So I can know where I'm at and remember the things that we did in this manga. Now, I know in I know in, in, in volume 14, we finally got the name of the sword and to see how Guts ended up with that big ass sword we saw at the beginning of this manga okay it is called a dragon slayer and has never seen the name so fitting for a sword of course so yes we are going to dive in so without no further ado okay let's switch over to the review so we can know where we are okay yeah, you already, you already know, you know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do this. So, okay. Let's scroll down here. Let's go back. We know how it ended, you know, the tragic story of... A lot of you guys told me, too, in the last... I I'm taking my time. Now, I'm, I'm letting you guys know that I'm taking my time to do these um, volume chapter. No rushing through it. You know, hopefully you guys enjoyed the discussion, enjoyed the read through enough for you guys to understand that I'm trying to review the manga just as much as I'm reading through it. Okay, so uh, go through here. Um, Guts and the Skull Knight. So I'm, uh, I'm done with the, well, not done with, but... I'm still going to try to complete the volume within two hours, but at the same time, you know, I'm not in a rush per se. So, um, okay, so we have the meeting with the Skull Knight, you know, right in trying to save Casca because she ran out, you know, you know, she had the, the baby, but uh, all right. So a lot of people said also that the baby became wrote in the comment section baby became um she was already pregnant from guts right and 
that is actually their child because i was thinking that maybe it was griffith's child and how did this child come about so quickly because that's what i was saying like how did the child come about so quickly you know what i mean like we don't know we don't know how much time exactly i don't think it was ever explained how much time has actually passed between um when guts and Casca had relations um until they went to rescue Griffith and, and all this stuff happened. So, um, so it is a possibility. I never actually thought about it, but you guys are right, you know, and plus, um, you guys referred to me also back in the first volume of the manga where we got to meet that child or something of us of sort. I never went back to check. I probably will at some point. Um, after I finished today, um, uh, just like oh, I remember now, but she had the kid and it was like a little demon kid and Costco was trying to protect it, you know, and said it's a cursed child and all of this stuff. And then guts picked it up, threw it away. Says it's a demon Costco was trying to protect. It. I mean, she. I mean, a mother would always try to protect a child, no matter what the child looks like, no matter what the child is. So, right. We also got to meet, you know, see how Guts came in contact with Put, with Puck. Did I just say Put? Puck, right? So, that was pretty cool to see. Also, you know, he locked her up. And then he decided to leave because he can he can't stay here, you know. So, yep, guts went in with the slash, you know. Picked up, gave him some bogus <laughs> sword that he thought that was gonna be strong. And then it broke. And then he used the um, the gun on his arm that Rickert gave him. Um, my, well, he modified it and then he picked up the Dragon Slayer. He picked up the Dragon Slayer. I'm just scrolling through, guys. Because um, remember, we're not going to a full review. It's more of like just a browse through of the last chapter we the last volume we did okay that's to remind ourselves they came up on the tree guts was here it was telling a story about the tree and thought it was like folklore but it turns out it was true that they were tying like people up on the tree and killing them uh, they were trying to mess with this girl guts ended up saving the girl and demons came out of the tree Right, and then, right, Guts took him out, and then he dipped with the girl, went to her village, you know, after he saved, saved, saved her from everybody, from all of these demons and the dudes that were there, you know, and then we met Puck. Puck and Guts, right? And then we learned about the demon, the demon fairies. What they call them again? The the elves of Misty Valley, but they weren't actually elves. They were demons, right? They were attacking this village, eating the people, you know? They were eating them people up, eating them. And Puck was like, fairies are not supposed to be like that. Because they were saying it was fairies because they, did, they didn't like Puck. Right. So they came to attack the village. Right. So uh, when they come, they eat fast. You know what I'm saying? Then you had this bum old, this old man. I think it was a girl's father. That was like beating on the moms and stuff. And he a, he a buster. 
You know what I'm saying? And then he led them into like a shed. He used the little kid as bait <laughs> and led them all into like a. I think it was like a barn. And then he lit the barn on fire, I think. Yeah, he blew up the barn. <laughs> right? So. Call them elf bugs. And then we had like this at the end. Uh, as I said, I don't remember if it was a continuation of the story or not. I don't remember anybody answering this because it was like they said this story is a submission piece created by Kintaro Miura during college in 1988, which became the basis for what is now Berserk. The establishment of details, worldview, and whatnot differs at points from the Berserk series being published today. But the intent is still present in this early incarnation. This story is set after the conclusion of the band of the ox story ox. So this is a part of the story. I did read that, but I didn't really take it into stock really. So this is basically the the concept that was first, but it happened after the band of the arc arc. So it was like an extra story that happened after because you can see the art is very different, right? The art you can see that the art is very different, right? So, but it was still pretty cool to see, you know. So this dude that ended up being a demon, right, right, he ended up being a demon and got set to take him out. And he was, he was also talking about. He's an apostle of Vuana, right? Vuana is one of the... Uh, he's part of God Hand, I think. There's no... Um, there's no way. If I'm not mistaken, because I did... I do have a picture of it. I do have a picture of that that I took. Of that part of manga where they all had names. Um, so... Okay, so none of them named. It's Conrad, Ubik, Slan, and Void. So, I don't know who Vuana is. So, I don't know who Vuana is. So, I'm guessing that question is going to be answered. This, um, a band of sacrifice to Vuana. Who is he talking about? Is That Vuana is not a part of the God Hand, so I don't know who Vuana is. So, I guess we're going to find out who that that demon is sooner or later, maybe in the next chapter. All right, so let's that once that loads up. But for the most part, as I said, I'm going to just be chill doing these read throughs now because I'm, you know, what I'm saying I have the time. There's no rush. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to, I used to feel like I was rushing through um, the read through. So I'm just going to be chilling trying to do this now so i hopefully you guys can enjoy the beautiful sounds of my voice here because your boy is gonna be chilling for this read through okay so hopefully you guys like um, a nice soothing voice <laughs> you know so um i think it finished loading up okay so let's jump into it man volume 15 we got five Okay, so we got 11 ch chapters to get through. All right, so we back in um, back where we left off from the chapter before the last one that we saw, because that was like an extra thing that they chose to tell us before. So before this, I think that happened before this. Okay. Okay, so we got the the demon fairies they notice the thing lost children chapter okay so here we go you're really strong mister even though you're a human how come a big elf that's an elf that's an elf everybody's asking you know cuz this one just showed up and he she's big as hell so God says, so you're the queen bee. <laughs> she replies, I'm no bee. 
I'm an elf. Okay, if you say so, I don't believe it is so, but okay, so we got guts here. I don't know what he's doing. It doesn't look like he's being attacked. So so he's like playing elf, maybe insect scourge. And that, that was mean. Did you hear all that? What should we do? Get him. He's a liar. He's lying. Grown up. He's a lying grown up. We always get the grown ups. He's like, what's with them? They don't seem like elves, says Puck. They seem like. Right. Then here we go. And they start to attack. He's like, start to attack. Guts tries to chop the queen elf <laughs> and misses. It's like, wait, Guts, time out. <laughs> That's Puck trying to call out to Guts. And he's like, what? What? She flies around. It's like, Jill. Somebody is like, Guts, what's happening here? Oh, the little kid is running back to, to the girl. You okay? Shut up or get lost, you. So Puck goes over to Guts. Why she? Why he called out to Guts? I don't know. He's like, "Got you, you." Okay. So it's like time out. Hey, time out. He's trying to get Guts' attention. <laughs> Guts looks at him like, "Bitch, <laughs> I said time out. Quit fighting them. Shut up." I can hardly tell you apart as it is. Keep hanging around and I'll swat you too. Puck's like, listen. They they they're they're definitely not elves. They're they're children. Oh and he's like, say what? The move the way they move and act? Besides, I can feel it in their thoughts, I can tell. It's like they're children. Human children. How did they transform into these ugly looking things? It's like human? Huh? Hey, don't go talking with humans on your own like that. That's what we call PCAF, the outcast. <laughs> it's like Pika, Pika what? PCAF? PCAF gets punished along with the humans. <laughs> She's going after Puck. And he's like, kill her. <laughs> Shoot her down. <laughs> like, what? What gives? What gives? She goes in. Why is Jill out here? What is she doing? It's like, stop it, Rosine. It's you, isn't it? Oh, so it's, oh, damn. She knocked. She knocked her over. I guess the name rang a bell. She, she calls out. She's like, Jill? She calls out to her again. Rosine! She's standing there. She flies away. Oh, damn. So maybe it is Rosine. And she's like, Rosine! It's like, you okay there, Sonny? It's like guts. Guts falls over. I don't know why. Guts just falls over. <laughs> you know, he's like, hey, what's wrong, Mr. Swordsman? It's her dust. Look like she's poisonous. I was clumsy. Damn it. She's like, can you stand? You can beat him up now, kiddo. It's like, my cattle barn. The winter provisions. <laughs> it's like, w w was it you? Did you do this? Thomas, you use Thomas like that. Have you no humanity? It's like, oh no, we're pissing him off again. Especially the housewives. <laughs> it's like, it's all cause guts goes so nuts. Eh. So he's like, <laughs> he starts laughing. <laughs> he's laughing. It's like, so they're like, 
what's so funny, bastard? And he's like, you people make me laugh. When this kid ran out, did even one of you unlock your door? That's a, and, and that's the thing, too, because I remember that from the last chapter. Like, he was trying to get away, and nobody tried. Nobody else tried to go and rescue him except Guts. And now they're giving him mouth about a stupid-ass barn. Yeah. In any case, you will hand those children over to us. Jill, Thomas, come here. So Jill is holding up Guts. Jill! Jill, Jill not going to do that. Is, oh, damn. She, she Is she dipping? She's like, Jill, hurry. Hurry and come here. And Jill is looking at her mom. It's like, Mom. So the, the little guy says, Jill. And she's like, no. Oh, the crowd goes wild. She just talked back to her mama. <laughs> oh my god so we have them going crazy because what in the tarnation is going on here what is this it's like those those children they're they're children what are these all the dead oh wait a second did they turn back when they die is that what happened they turned back into their regular form when they died Cause here he says guts and it's like damn things changed back when they died, right? Cause this is the barn. This is the barn, the burned down barn. So Guts grabs Jill. It's like Jill, they're calling out to her, he's like, change a plan. How about you step aside? <laughs> Guts methods are all, they're always surprising to me because the stuff that he chooses to do sometimes, but it's never that I ever like think like now that I know who he is, this is it's surprising, but at the same time, it's very much what you've come to know known him for, know him for, known him for, know him for, <laughs> you know. It's very much what you've come to know him for when it comes on to tactics that he might use. He's, his intention, you know what I'm saying, is never to really hurt the person. Because I remember back in, when when was it? I think it was like the first volume or the second volume we did. Where, um, where after he rescued the girl... He like he did something to the girl. I don't remember exactly what he did, but he but after he rescued the girl, after they came out of the the alternate dimension and stuff like that, and he did something for the girl, like v rescued her, like he he like used her for something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, so this is not necessarily new. Like it's still surprising that he would that, but he's been doing this for a long time, man. So that's the end of that chapter. This is like, how about you step aside? <laughs> Jill, Mrs. Don't. It's like, guts. It's like, wait a minute. What are you thinking? Like, you're pissing them off even more here. Quit rubbing them all the wrong way. It's like, look, an elf. It's an elf. Is he really on your side? It's like now everything's gone all wrong. Uh, that's Puck. So we have Guts here holding Jill hostage. <laughs> it's like everyone, please stand back. He's wounded, so it'd be really dangerous to approach him. Coming through. <laughs> like Jill, Mom. It's like, oh, damn, daddy coming in with the axe. And Guts looks at him. Oh, damn. Oh, shit. She got cut. And he's like, give it up. My body's going numb, and I don't know when I lose control. It's like, you brute. Miss us. She fainted. <laughs> he's like, this is turning into the least... Of all available evils. <laughs> oh my god. They're funny. So. He got out of there with Jill. 
But at least the father got some guts to actually... Or or maybe it was just a random old man. Because I think, I think this is the dad that's out here. I, I thought this was the dad. But I guess... I think this guy is the dad. That was giving her a hard time and stuff. And the mom. So, she's walking out. It's like, this is far enough. You, go on home. It's like, hey now. It's like, just go on home. You put a knife to a girl's throat. She's bleeding, ain't she? And Guts is looking at Puck. <laughs> it's like, and now she ain't. See ya. Sorry about all that. And so he apologized. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's, he does these things, you know, to get out of situations to... He just, he does that. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's still surprising to see him do it. But at the same time, it is just so, it's just, it's him. You know what I'm saying? So damn dirty. He's leaving. You're going to the Misty Valley, aren't you? It's like, I'll go too. Jill wants to go. Okay. So she's like, Jill. It's like, that girl, that big elf, she might be my friend who vanished a long time ago. So... So, so what'll, what'll happen? Give it up. As you saw, she's not human anymore. I'm about to go kill that friend of yours. If you come with me, what'll happen? S tells her to stay away. This ain't some kitty game. She probably still gonna go anyways. It's like, he's going. Is this it then? The end? Will it begin again, the way things always are, hard, are there? Nothing changes, nothing ever happens, like it's always been. That's the way things are. That's... He's like, look at you, unbelievable. So Puck is talking to Guts. Look at you, unbelievable. Why you gotta go and say those things? Being all grown up and blunt in front of a tender little girl. She gives you shelter and food and you repair like that? Don't do those things. Teach the youth. He's bleeding. He's like, come on, let me see your wound. He's like, ah, that does, <laughs> that does it. What the hell's your problem? I'm only gonna say this once. Says Guts, I got no recollection of making you my pet. Quit buzzing around me. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Puck is like, I'm not a pet though. <laughs> He's like, hey, don't say that. Without me, this story would be way too dark. That's very true. And that's also Puck breaking the fourth wall. It, um, So authors do this all the time. If you know what the fourth wall is. It's like us, the audience, like being the, the story itself, being self-aware that people are watching. You get what I'm saying? It's, you got to have color in your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like without Puck, you'll probably like this manga would just be dark, dark, dark. Because remember when we didn't have Puck, it was all very, we had some happy moments some really, but it's more um, battle, battle moments, you know, Puck has that comic relief i think i talked about this earlier when i when i just started out doing this manga read through you know i used to talk about that where um uh you know puck is the comic relief of the story that went away for like 10 10 volumes or more you know um since we've been doing the backstory coming back to this point so him coming back again and and now saying something like this you know what i'm saying this story would be way too dark it's breaking the fourth wall which is pretty cool so i thought i told you before seeing elves makes me want to vomit it makes me want to crush them don't be think you can whip for whatever Okay, I don't know what the hell he's saying there because his mouth is full. So he's trying to bite, bite guts and <laughs> and guts just throw, throws him down in the grass. It's like, oh sure, had enough, hey, eh? come get some more. 
<laughs> you can't fight guns. Why you got a ladybug on your head? <laughs> like, fine. See if I care. Guts, you are bleeding hard, man. He's here. And that image is still in his head off the scene, all the kids. It's crazy. Now, he found a snake. And he's drinking snake blood. He's drinking snake blood. Right? He skinned the snake. And then he's drinking the blood. What else is he going to do? Lost too much blood. So he drank the blood to replenish blood? Why would you drink snake blood to replenish the blood you lost? So he ate the snake thingy. Right? On top of that, poison and weariness. He's like, coca leaves. Okay. Looks like it's going to be a long night. Ah, and does he even get to sleep? Okay, so it's a demon over the fire. Is he dreaming? It's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> it kind of looks like the kid that, you know, it kind of looks like the kid that fell out of Casca kind of looks like it. What the? Is it like, it's like, was it you? Did you drag them here? Bellfire. Is this Jill? Jill is out here. Okay, so Gut stands up seeing all of these kids in the fire touching him. They're trying to touch him. They look like they're still on fire. That the the imagery that um this dude tr um tries to portray in this manga very some of the times when I look at it I'm like, you know, you want things to happen this way sometimes, but sometimes you really don't. But those those um these little increments that he that he includes you know, of portraying a nightmare. And sometimes, sometimes it makes for you, the, the viewer, it makes it a little bit hard for you to tell sometimes um, because you're, you're wondering if this is a dream sequence or not, you know, because the, the, the verse that they live in, demons just pop up out of nowhere. So it's, so it's kind of like, you're wondering, is it a dream? Is it is it really a dream? You know, if these things didn't exist, you would have a definitive answer to it, but you really don't. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like the mystery also, a mystery with, without a mystery that's within this manga that I like too. So let's take a break here and come back for another part. Okay, and we are back. All right, so we got these kids as i said i'm not a hundred percent sure you know if he's imagining this or if this is actually happening for real because all these spirits the spirits of the kids mm -hmm. that were burning in the barn that were burning the barn from the fear is dead that turned back into human babies they're all here in front of him and it looks like the one that appeared on top of the fire which i think looks like casca's kid that fell out of her um in the last chapter in the last volume, I mean, um, right, brought them there as he asked. So he's like, bastard. So he's like chopping the fire. He's like, you really know how to get under my skin. And he's like, you'd make me babysit brats all night while I puke up this blood? Fear enough. If it takes me all night to cough this stuff up, at least I'll be able to pass out in the mud come morning. You know, in, in, in some ways, Guts is very, he's very, um, what do you call it? He's very, um... 
spiritual in some ways, if you want to say that. He's very spiritual, like, and in, in other ways, he's a very crazy person. Like, um, I think he's, because of all the stuff that he's been through, in, in, in some ways, he's like a controlled kind of crazy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to, I don't know how to put this, but it's a very controlled madness that he has about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not out of the world. It's not, it's not out of the box. It's not out there to the, it was like, oh, that went way left field. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like when he does this, you're not looking at him where, because you know, you know where he's coming from, you know, his nature. So it's kind of like, no, you would be looking at that all the stuff that Guts has been through, through, right? He's been, he's been raped, raped as a kid, grown ass man, raped him. The man that he looked up to as his father figure, um, tried, tried to kill him. You know what I'm saying? At least he allowed him to get raped and then he tried to kill him and Guts went after his ass, right? Um, finally get getting a best friend then losing that best friend two demons you know what i'm saying um finding love losing that love <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's it's crazy it's crazy the amount of stuff he's been through so that's why i said it's like a controlled madness that he has about him that you can't blame him for a lot of the stuff that he does you know you just can't so we have here no sweat, no beast will ever attack you if you're with an elf. So Jill picked up Puck on the way, I guess. So, all right, so continue here. Is he really an elf? I wonder, or just some shady creature? Idiot response, this heading is <laughs> like, is this okay? It's like, hey, is this okay though, Jill? Is what? You know, even if you are with me, ain't it bad news for a girl to be out this late? It's like, besides, they're not elves. They're dangerous like monsters. Guts being how he is, you can't depend on him. And it's not like that queen's going to become human again if you go to her. You might regret this. Jill is thinking about it. It's like, I'm sure I would regret it. Whether I follow after him this way or gone back to the village instead, either way, probably. It's like, it's like right now, I've already come this far. But, okay. It's like, Jill, look. Jill, look. Wow, so he's out here fighting these things like literally, man. Like, I don't understand why they, why they, are, why are they attacking guts? You know. So he's about to chop one of them. He says, "Mommy, where are?" And he chopped it. <laughs> it's like, what? What are guts? He's chopping them up, man. It's like, it's no use. He's totally gone. You're like, mommy. Wow. He's just, they, they think he's going nuts. Oh, damn. She was about to get chopped. This girl just went right in front. Right in front of the, the. She just went right in front of the thing. Like, what is wrong with her? She, she was about to get chopped good thing they're jumping on his back it's like mr. swordsman so he falls in front of her over her and he picks he picks her up and jumps away because they're attacking I mean I don't think she can see what's going on that's the thing and he's like hey hey so she woke, wakes up on top of him 
and on top of his chest. It's like, move. You're heavy. <laughs> like, move, you're heavy. So she goes, like, get off it. It's like, the, the bug with you? I'm like, huh? He's like, oh, sprinkle his dust on me. I hurt myself on the rocks and can't move. Not that I want it, but oh well. It's like, I'm sorry. Whatever. Just hurry. Why'd you follow me? It's like PCAF, huh? So what is PCAF? PCAF, the outcast. All the kids around here know about that. It's a fairy tale. So, so from what from my understanding, that's what triggered her to believe that 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 was what's her name. Um. I, I I I don't I I don't remember her name. <laughs> I don't remember the the fairy's name. Um, I'm guessing because she was saying PCAF and was going after Puck. That's why. So that's how she recognized her. She says long ago in the village there was a boy named PCAF, with pointed ears and red eyes. His parents loved him very much, but he was always bullied by the village children because of his eyes and ears they call him red-eyed peacalf and pointy-eared peacalf peacalf thought this isn't my home these people aren't my real parents because neither peacalf's father nor mother nor even one person in the whole village had red eyes or pointed ears the way he did one night peacalf snuck out of his house without his parents knowing he went to find his own real parents and his own real world in which to live. He made his way alone into the forest where elves were said to live, where the grown-ups said never to go. And Peacock found them. They had red eyes and pointed ears. Certainly, they were the same as him. But this is what they said to the overjoyed Peacock. You're one of us? You're one of us? No, not true. You haven't wings to ride upon the wind like we do. Seeing Peacalf's confusion, one of them informed him of something. Long ago, a human man and woman brought a baby here who was close to death from illness. We have, the bro we have broken the law of our village and entered this forest to save this child. So this is the appearance um, depiction the parents that brought the child, they're saying this. We have broken the law of our ch village and entered this forest to save this child. This child is our life. Please somehow save him. The man and woman pleaded desperately. They granted the request using magic on the baby. The baby's life was saved, but in exchange, his appearance was altered to have resembled the elves. Even so, the man and woman cried tears of joy. It only mattered that their child lived. When Peacalf heard this, he ran off in great haste. With tears in his eyes, he went swiftly back to the way he'd come. But when Peacalf returned to his house, it was all too late. For some strange reason, for some strange reason, even though he'd only been in the forest for a few moments, in the village, a hundred years had passed. What? On top of a small hill between the village, where he no longer knew a single person, and the elf forest where no human was allowed to live, Peacalf, the outcast, cried and cried, his red eyes swollen even redder. Not much of a happy ending, says Guts. Rosine loved that story. In fact, she once told me, I'm just like PCAF. Okay, Rosine. Okay, next chapter. Rosine was a girl four years older than me who lived across the street. To me, an only child, she was like a real big sister. Rosine was a little strange. She 
She like playing in the woods and streams like a boy would. And she do things like catch bugs and small animals to proudly show to me. She had lots of junk, the, kid, the kind boys would consider treasure. The oddest of all was an egg shaped, mm, not a monolith, not, not monolith. <laughs> Did I just say monolith? A behelith, not a behelith. Oh my God. The oddest of all was an egg shaped stone that looked like a human face. She says she found it on a riverbank and always took good care of it. Oh, hell no. Nah. That perked up guts. We play in the woods and streams so long that suddenly the sun would be starting to set. That kind of thing happened often. But when I think about it now, it was because Rosine avoided going home. I didn't understand because I was so young. But Rosine's parents fought a lot. She was always the reason. She'd often have bruises on her cheeks and arms at those times. She'd always tell me, Jill, the story of Peacalf isn't really right. In the real Peacalf story, it turns out he really is an elf. Even now, he lives happily with his real father and mother in the land of the elves. And to tell the truth, I'm just like Peacalf. I really belong in their land too. She turned to me as I looked serious and impressed and grinned in a funny way. Like she was forcing herself to be cheerful. Mm. I heard about this later on. Before I was born, my village got wrapped up in a big conflict. At that time, almost all the villagers had taken refuge in the forest and were safe. But it seems not all the women escaped in time. Among them was Rosine's mother. Rosine had to grow up listening to her father's remarks. Like, is that girl really my daughter? Then one night when it was raining heavily. When it was raining heavily. She's like, who's there? Shh. Rosine. Jill. This is goodbye. I'm leaving. Like, goodbye? Where, where, where are you going? Where else would I go? The Misty Valley. I'm going to the land of the elves. Farewell, Jill. I leave all my treasures to you. She says, Rosine. She says, farewell. The grown-ups searched the forests and mountains for days looking for Rosine, but in the end they weren't able to find her. Then oddly enough a few days later her parents also vanished from the village, almost like they followed after her. There was a wooden box with all the treasures Rosine said were mine now, but looking through it that strange stone was the only thing I couldn't find. Then sometime afterwards, those elves started attacking villagers. I don't really understand, being so young, but now I feel like I do a bit. How Rosine felt then? I was like, hey, that strange stone Rosine had, was it like this? It's like, look, like this, so right now they do have the behelit on them, okay. It's the same as hers. What is it? A free loader at my pace and my body pillow. Bet you. <laughs> it's like, bet you the behelit. Totally settled. This is uh, a magic stone. A magic stone that summons angels who grant power to weak little humans. It's like angels. They might just be demons disguised, but something like that. Even I don't get how you use this to summon them, but your friend ended up doing it. And she obtained the pseudo elf form in exchange for something. It's like something. Funny that you mentioned fairy tales. It's just like Peacalf's eyes and ears. You've got to have some collateral for stuff like that. They require a sacrifice. They tell you to present 
what's most important to you in return for power. My guts. A few days later, her parents vanished, you said? Damn, so are you trying to tell me that she sacrificed her parents for power? Damn, bro, like, that's savage. Rosine offered them up to have her own wish granted, her own parents' lives as sacrifice. Oof, that's tough. Let's put an end to this. This ain't some kid's fairy tale like Picaf. It's a gruesome, grown-up fairy tale. And if you stick your neck out any further, next time, I'm not stopping my sword. It's like, and if you stick your neck out any further, you'll end up dead. Okay. Next time, I'm not stopping my sword. This... It's no place for some kid who snuck off from a loser father and a powerless mother to go wandering around. You're a nuisance. <laughs> Hold on, don't you think you went a bit too far, <laughs> says Puck. <laughs> she was about to smack him in the face. It's like, kids, and she, he caught her hand, and he says, kids have their own fairy tales. You want to escape? Stick to PCAF. You get back here now. <laughs> Puck is always talking shit to Guts. Guts never listens. It's like, why is it gotta be this way? You keep going on about kids. Well, excuse her for being one. This is child abuse. I'll sue. <laughs> it's like, regulations are strict these days. If you keep doing what you please, we'll get banned. Hey, what you doing there? Guts picks up Puck and puts him under a rock. <laughs> it's like you're as fairy tale as they come. And you never learn. <sighs> Jill, don't let what that rotten creep says get you down. Kids can't be blamed for what being for being what they are. Puck is trying to cheer Jill up. There's nothing wrong with you or Rosine, Jill. It's just that kids always suffer. And it's society that's to blame for that. Like, it's embarrassing and frustrating. By the way, Jill, I kind of got stuck trying to get out. But this Rosine is coming. Rosine is coming. So Rosine comes out in front of Jill with her compadres following. All right. So she, Rosine is approaching Jill, coming down. She's smiling. And Jill says, Rosine. Oh, damn. She kisses her on the cheek. Okay. It feels like ages, Jill. Okay. It's really weird, but okay. She hugs her. She's like, Rosine, is it you? She keeps asking if it's Rosine. <laughs> okay, so we have guts here. His mark is act. He's look. His mark started bleeding, so he knows they're nearby. And then we still have the Rosine and Jill connection going on. And it's like, boo! He's <laughs> trying to. So they're playing around. So it's like, so that's Rosine. Look how big you are now, Jill. Almost as tall as me already. Is it really you, Rosine? But the way you look. Hmm. Hmm. It's like, look, look. We. It's like, well, it's like I used to tell you. This is the real me. The real, yup, the queen of the elves. And it says, Rosine offered them up to have her own wish granted. Her own parents lives as sacrifice oh jill 
This is like old times. There's lots we should catch up on. I hereby extend you an invitation. Huh? To our land of the elves. The Misty Valley. It's like the Misty Valley, but I... Like, she's allowed. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me think about this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I Jill is saying, like, bruh, you're not even going to let me think about this, you know what I mean? It's like, so Rosine says, it's fine. Fine. Don't you worry about a thing. Okay. It's a good place. You can play and have fun all the time. Even after the sun goes down. It's okay. I won't drop. I won't drop you. Oh no. Just so she lifting up drill. Taking her to Misty Valley. You know what I mean? Oh damn. Guts is coming up with that. <laughs> Guts is coming in with the hammer. He's like, I'm not playing no games with you. Let go of Jill. You bum. <laughs> Trying to chop her. Yo. So they're frightened. And Guts is swinging his sword. He don't care, bruh. He about to kill him. She flew away with Jill. Oh, damn. She, something got cut off her tail. A, she, a, a part of one of her wings got cut. And something else got cut. Boom. Something else got cut. I don't know what that is. She cries out. Yeah. Guts is looking at her like. Lucky. <laughs> you lucky. You know. Oh damn! Look, look how she just became feral again. Like that's crazy, right? Look how she just became feral again. You see how innocent she looked before? They changed how she looked. Now she look all feral and angry again. Like before, like an actual demon. And now we got some. What the hell are these? Some some real killer bees out here? Yeah, this is crazy. So they going in. So Jill is telling Rosine to stop and please stop Rosine, please. And now she takes off with, with Jill. Puck is calling out to her. It's like guts. You seemed about to kill Jill too. It's like, did you mean to kill Jill too? And Guts is like, so what if I did? <laughs> it's like, Albatross death blow. <laughs> Damn, she, she she did a wrestling move. And um he did a um Puck does a wrestling move on Guts's face. <laughs> on his face. Rotten. <laughs> it's like I so he's um Puck is talking to guts now. It's like I already figured you were a rotten creep, but I never thought you'd stoop this low. Even a zombie fails at being as rotten as you. Inhuman scumbag, dirt and rotten bastard. From now on when I see you, I'm calling you the bastard swordsman. So anyway, that being said, you disgust me. I hope you get killed, jerk. Goodbye. So long, bastard swordsman. <laughs> Guts is looking at Puck like, what? So he's like, did I hold back? So he's like, looking back at the moment, he's like, did I hold back? You know, and he's like, never. All right, so Rosine is flying off with Jill. It's like, you don't need to be scared, Jill. I won't let go no matter what. Look, it's a view no human could ever see. I beg to differ. <laughs> Maybe back in the day when they didn't have earplanes and, you know, you know, all these high-ass buildings and stuff. The world... <laughs> 
as seen only by birds and us winged elves. Incredible. The forest, the river is so far away. The sky, it's so vast. Beautiful. I didn't know the world was this beautiful. My village so small I can't see it anymore. In that tiny place I became I become frightened and small. You can fly all you want to your heart's content, Jill. That is if you become one of us. <laughs> you can fly all you want to your heart's content, Jill. That is if you become one of us. Me, an elf? But I, I couldn't. Rosine says, why not? Why not? Why not? The black swordsman. Who is he? Huh? Like Jill. Do you have a thing for him? <laughs> She's like 10. <laughs> Are you serious? How old is Jill? She's not even, I don't even think she's a teenager. It's like, it's not that, right? I don't know anything about him. It looks like he was heading for the Misty Valley. I wonder if he'll make it there. The valley is guarded by some dependable grown-ups. Grown-ups? Uh, yeah. They would never hurt children, and they protect us with their lives from all who would hurt us. They're real grown-ups. Protectors of children, the forest guardians, you'd, you'd say. The forest guardians, you'd say. The mist is everywhere now, says Guts. This feeling, I must be just about at the Misty Valley. Bruh. Are these the guardians? Yo, these, these, whatever. They're not elves, bro. They are not elves, my guy. Yo, look at what they did. Bruh. So Guts is here with all these freaking demons piled up in a ball. So they come out, he's like, we, we meet again. Don't say you forgot about us. Yeah, it's the guys from the from the tree. It's the guys from the tree, right? In the last last volume that he rescued Jill from. It's like you can't pass. Anyone who'd hurt the children, we won't let any of them pass this point. It's like from bad from bandits to babysitters, huh? Huh? And from human to something else, by the looks of it, they jump out. Guts hit him with the with the with the arrows. You know what I'm saying? Hit him with the arrows. One in the eye, one in the mouth. Ooh, nasty! All right, Guts is getting into it. He fires again at him. More arrows. And then taking out two more. And then we have Guts. Wow. What is he doing here? Reload? I'm guessing. He's reloading. Oh, d what? Yo, this dude is a lobster now? What the hell? <laughs> Cause I was wondering what this, I was wondering what this is, you know, I was wondering what this is, but it's a freaking, this dude is a lobster. Okay. <laughs> you know? So, and the other one too, jumping up behind him here, they caught the sword. Wow. He caught the sword with his, with his tail. And then we got a centipede jumping up from the back. Centipede demon. Oh. They're attacking. Ooh. Guts brings the sword up. Ch chops off. Lift. Yo. He lift the dude off the ground. And chop the centipede guy in half. That is savage. 
because he because I was like he caught the sword what not supposed to be able to do that right cut the centipede in half Oof. finish him damn Ooh. Uh. what do we say around here too easy <laughs> Guts is taking care of them. More of them transform. Why do they all look like weird shellfish? <laughs> this is the shellfish gang. The shellfish gang over here trying to beat up Guts. Oh, damn. Oh, did, no, this one is a beetle? What the hell? Why does, he's a beetle, not a shellfish. This one is a beetle. Okay, so the beetle. Trying to take Guts out. Okay. Grab him by the neck, but push him down to the ground. Ooh. You got stabbed. You fell right on the sword, my friend. Too bad. Oh, damn. It clamped his neck anyways. Oh, damn. He clamped his neck. Ugh. I feel that. I felt that. I felt that. Jeez. Oh, he's trying to get it off. He shot some arrows into it. Then we got one more coming for the head. Oh, my God. There's so many. Then we have... Oh, damn. This image, bro. That's crazy. We got one coming from the top. He tried to. Um, Guts is trying to get it off. He's trying to use a knife to get it off. <laughs> oh, what's this? Is this? Hold on a second. Let me get this right because I'm not sure what's happening here. Okay, we got this guy approaching Guts from the top. Then we have something of a knife. I think Guts is trying to to um to get the claw off of his neck but it's not budging but it's hurting him it's in his neck look at this it's crazy meanwhile this thing is still coming for him right here and now ooh okay how did he get out Yo. Did he flip? I think he did a front flip with the sword. I think he did a, a front flip with the sword. Took out the dude behind. Yo, that was clean. That was clean. That was clean right there. That was clean. Right? So we got... Guts still bleeding, but he took him out. Okay. All right, moving on to the next chapter. Let's take a break here. Come back for another part. We'll go on to the next chapter. You can't pass. You who would hurt the children. You can't pass. Guts is just reloading. He, he, you know what I'm saying? He just, he just reloading. He's like, no joke. I'm not going anywhere. There's no way I'd ever pass through and leave even one of you alive. Every last one of you is dead. Don't bother moving aside. I'll trample every one of you. Coming through. <laughs> Guardians chapter 2. Okay. So Guts is going in. He reload. Reload the, the, the arm. The crossbow arm. You know what I'm saying? He got a crossbow arm and he got a, a cannon in the arm. That's crazy. Right? So we got him going after these lesser demons or whatever. They all over here looking like grasshoppers and beetles and shellfish. <laughs> you know? It's crazy. Guts is just taking them out. This one over here looking like a, a cricket. 
or a grasshopper, whatever you want to call him. He's going in. Arrows for days. Taking them out, shooting them in the head. Boom, boom, boom. And now he grabs the dragon slayer. Uh, he grabs the dragon slayer. Going in after these dudes, man. It's like, guts, you jerk, 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 jerk. Oh, I'm so pissed. I just can't accept that he's even human this time. Even if I am an elf. <laughs> You bump it into a, a bird up here <laughs> with Puck. He's like, hey, Polly, what do you think could make a human's personality that screwed up? He doesn't talk about himself one bit, you know. <laughs> he only thinks of elves as bugs or something. <laughs> if I hadn't been with him till now, where would he be? He does not get how important I am at all. What the heck happened between Guts and those god things anyway? <laughs> those god things. <laughs> talk about a god hand. Especially his relationship with the raven looking one. It must have been beyond description if it made him into what he is. Something incredible must have happened. Banned. But what? A human's whole life stained with nothing but rage. Stained with nothing but rage. Now what would what would do that? You know? It's like, ah, forget it, forget it. He's got nothing to do with me anymore, anyhow. Nothing at all. It's too late. I don't care. Nevermore. Okay. It's like, is this, this place, the Misty Valley? Like, oh crap, escape. But, but wait, is Jill somewhere in there? Maybe. Like, okay, okay, this is a good chance. If I run off now, I'll have failed. I'm going in. Just you wait, chill. Here I come. <laughs> so Puck is going in for Jill. Okay, it's fine. Guts is out here fighting for his life, as always. Damn, look how many of them injure him. He's like, yo, I'm not leaving none of y'all alive. I'm killing everybody. Everybody getting it. It's like, I never thought you'd really be able to defeat them all alone. Who are these dudes that just, are you really human? Why are you out here, you know what I'm saying? With, with your balls out and everything. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're about to transform too. It's like, like I care what either of you say. <laughs> Okay, so we got a praying mantis and a, a rhino beetle. I don't, I, I don't remember what's the name of these beetles, but there's a beetle that looks like a rhinoceros. They, they look very similar to a rhinoceros. So I'm, I, I, it, the names are very close too. I just don't remember what they're called. Pretty sure one of you guys are gonna tell me that in the comment section. What's the name of that beetle? I'm not looking it up. Okay. So here comes the praying mantis. A mantis comes in to guts. Guts slashes. What happened? Something happened. Oh damn! He swings, but it looks like mantis got to him first. It's like what? It's like quick. Yo, the mantis is quick, bro. And the, the the rhino beetle coming in at the same time. That's crazy. The rhino beetle comes in at the same time. Guts flips over. It looked like the rhino lifted him up in the air. That's crazy. It lifted him up in the air. Okay, next chapter. Pursuers. Okay, so they decided to bury the kids. The kids from the from the village, they decided to bury them. That's pretty cool. It was like our son, our son might be among them. Hey, steady on. Impossible. That couldn't be true. This old man's the, such a coward, bro. I can't stand him. You know, an army, why are they here? Another war? Everyone to the forest, quickly. 
wait, good people. There is no need for worry. It's like, Father Hobbs? To think that we should lay eyes upon them in a place like this. Who? Eyes on who? Who are these guys coming in? It obviously, it's like, all forces halt. Excuse us for disturbing your activity. Who is the priest in charge of this parish? I am... My name is Hobbs. Or Hobbs. We have been sent to this place by the Holy See on a mission of miracle recognition. I am Fornice. Leader of the Holy Iron Chain Knights. <laughs> like miracle recognition? But why in a region as remote as this? I beg your pardon in that regard. Incidentally, what is this? It's like, it's like incidentally. What, what is this? Please, we must speak in the village chapel, though I can offer no aspect hospitality it's like all force is a brief rest assist with the burial in shifts azan serpico accompany me i yes ma'am oh so it's a she at first i didn't even think it i mean I, I wasn't even thinking it was a girl but it's actually a girl not that i'm actually looking at her plus the name too fawnies i mean that could be a guy's name too because it's not that feminine. Um, okay, next next page. So like an elf and a black swordsman? Hmm. It's like, you may not believe the story, but in God's name, all of it is true. And those children as you saw them. It's like, that certainly is hard to believe all at once. But it is to, I don't know why I'm still talking like a guy and this is a girl. <laughs> Why am I still imitating her as a guy? <laughs> but it is to confirm that I can't do a girl voice right now. I really can't because like, you hear my voices. Like, like, it's hard for me to do a girl voice right now. But it is to confirm that authenticity that we have been sent to this place. Which means we are following that black swordsman. I, I cannot divulge to you the details but I think you are aware that many regions have seen repeated incidents of plague and poor harvest these past few years in addition wild rumors have again become commonly spread priests is like wild rumors of evil spirits and such things it's like high witness reports Eyewitness reports to the Holy Sea of Spectres and Monsters have increased these past two or three years. Of course, nearly all of them are nothing more than baseless falsehoods. Therefore, it is unthinkable for the Holy See to move on each and every one. But mysteriously, among those high witness reports, there is one common account that surfaces. That is, the Black Swordsman. When we trace this man's steps while relying upon these rumors to our surprise almost every time we came upon some grisly incident and now another one who is that man is he nothing more than an imagined vision born from the unrest of the people or is he merely a villainous criminal to whom exaggerated rumors have been detached or possibly possibly does he hold some importance to our religion I see. I do not know the circumstances, but it is weighty enough that your group has mobilized against one man. It would seem that the reason is serious indeed. I suppose all that can be done is to meet with this man directly and, ascert and ascertain the truth of the matter. <laughs> My accent keeps changing and I don't care. But this is the most trouble in the Misty Valley where the Black Swordsmen seem to be headed is as a as I mentioned earlier an extraordinarily dangerous place the villages in this region have dispatched vigilante groups a number of times but to this day not one man has returned 
I wish to have one of the villagers guide you, but I do not wish to expose anyone to... Father! Uh, just a minute there, Father. This damn old man came back and he was like... So the mom is still home praying about Jill. Uh, 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 I'm home. It's like, dear, I'm hearing, I'm heading out soon. Hey, where do you put it? He's like, it? You know, it, it, the armor I brought home from the war. Ah, uh, looks like Luck's finally smiling on me. God damn. This man wants to go join the, back the army to go to Misty Valley. I don't know what he's up to. Guts is over here getting his ass kicked by these demons. By the mantis and this rhino beetle or whatever. It's crazy. Right? These two are tougher than those other bugs. We used to be knights. You'd best not lump us in with the others. No wonder. Guts is like, no wonder. That's why. They're so tough. A beetle goes after Guts again. Guts dodges like a boss. You know what I'm saying? Dodges like a boss. But this mantis is so quick. He's right there. So Guts blocks him with the sword. Blocks him with the sword. And his arm. Oh, damn. Oof. Oof. That was brutal. Now that there is brute. That's a brutality right there. Boof. Just got ran over by a rhino beetle. <laughs> you know? And he's underground. He's like, not good. Can't fight them both at once. Can't fight them both at once. So, ooh. He goes after the horn. Or the, he goes after the head. But he got the horn. Damn, he's like, it's no use. He got... He couldn't cut clean through, but he got some of it, though. It's like, it's no use. With my hips turned from dodging, I can't kill it with one hit. Ah, damn. He's like, ah, at the same time, I can't dodge this time. Even if I dodge the big one, I can't avoid the mantis bastard speed. Like, what do I do? To kill in front and in back at the same time. Okay, bring out the cannon, fires the cannon, looks like he hit the mantis, oh, who, who did he hit with the cannon, ooh, clean, that was clean, he took out one with the cannon, and then chopped the other one, he chopped the mantis in half. <laughs> Boom. The Misty Valley, Chapter 1. So next chapter, Puck is over here riding on a beetle. You know, because that's what he does. So he shoots one in the face and then chops the other one. Nice. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Ooh. It looked like he got hurt from something. Did they fall on him? Maybe? I don't know. Okay, so he falls to his knees. It's like, doesn't feel like any arteries got cut. But still, if I lose any more blood... Elf us. It's like that's neat. <laughs> that's like that's neat. Covering the inside of a person's bag with dust. So he has some dust on him to recover. Ooh. Now they're turning back to humans. Right? Okay. So Hurrah, hurrah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on, bring it on. I'll kill you, dead, huh? No reaction? <laughs> it's like, this is the Misty Valley? Oh, wow, it's pretty. That much I can say. It's like, nice place. 
<laughs> Puck is over here relaxing. That's funny. It's autumn, but there's so many flowers. And somehow I feel nostalgic and strangely at ease. So Puck is over here watching the elves play. It's like those are the ones who attack Jill's village. But something... I know I can. <laughs> Did he join in with them? He joined in with them. Just out of the blue. Now they notice that he's there. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, now I done it different. Something's different. His head. So they all like, <laughs> like he's different from us. Infiltration successful. Why did they give him an eyeball? What? It's like he's stiff. As a board, the queen's back. She brought a new friend. It's like, let's go see. It's like, I'd better go. It's like, don't get caught. Don't get caught. Wow, a huge cedar tree. So this is where they all live. What? Wow, he sees this huge light. And all these elves just come pouring out. Wow. Was that? It's like, make yourself at home, says Rosine to Jill. It's like, eat, eat. And he's like, thanks. Says, so do you like the Misty Valley? It's like, sure. For some strange reason, the flowers are always in bloom here. And the trees always have fruit. It doesn't get cold, even in the winter. In the Misty Valley, you're never hungry or cold, like we were in the village. And this place is all ours, a secret flower garden just for elves, where human grown-ups aren't allowed to come, a land just for us. If I'd known the Misty Valley was like this, I'd have come here with you sooner. Damn, Jill is falling for the trap. She, she's falling in. She's falling for the trap, man. So, Jill, have you decided to become one of us? And Jill is saying, like, sorry, Rosie, and I still don't know. Sorry. She's like, that's fine. Spend tonight thinking it over. But, Jill... Was there anything fun in the village? Anything more fun than flying in the sky? So Puck comes in on Jill's shoulder. It's like, oh boy, was it tough sneaking in here? Like even unlimited lives weren't enough. I had to ice like 13 of them. <laughs> this dude, why are you here? Come on, I'm here to rescue you, of course. Or was it 15? <laughs> to rescue? Right, right. 18 of them to be exact. Damn, the number just keeps changing. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, where is he at? The swordsman. Guts. I gave up on him. Team's history. Oh, you weren't together? I mean, he was going to cut right through you too last time. Oh, so that was true. I wondered. It's like, yeah. That's the kind of guy he is. Forget that. Let's get out of here. It's just too dangerous for you to be here by yourself. Jill is like, listen, Puck. Uh, I, she's like, you were asked to become an elf? It's like, so, what you gonna do? You didn't say okay, did you? She's like, I don't know. I just don't know. Tell me, what should I do? What should you do? They're monsters. They sure ain't real elves. They attack and eat humans. Didn't you say so yourself, Joe? It's like, I guess so, but they all seem to be having fun here. It's so peaceful. It's like Attacking and eating humans is what wolves do, too. Maybe that's just what you do when you're not human. Wolves don't do that except in special situations. And, hey, everyone here used to be... Besides, I can't find it. 
For me, I can't find anything more enjoyable than those little ones. Being hungry and cold, worrying about the weather every day, afraid of bandits, afraid of war. From now on, forever and ever. I'm sensing a terribly chilling fear. What is it? But look, look, nobody knows what the future holds. Besides, your mother, yeah, I'm sure your mother's worried. Never mind your old man. Mother, right. Maybe I'll turn out like my mother, unable to become angry no matter what happens, even if her own children, child is beaten, made to cry and become tiny. Maybe that's how I'll end up. Jill, Puck is calling out to her. He's like, or maybe I'll become like my father, bullying my child when the mood strikes. I'd never... Oh, damn, she is squeezing Puck. What the fuck, girl? She is squeezing him. It's like, I'm sure I would. I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm their daughter. And Puck is like, it hurts, Jill. It's like, sorry, sorry, Puck. I've been crushed to death. <laughs> He's so funny, man. Okay, so we got all of them coming in. They're having fun. It's like, what's all this? It's like they're planning war. Charge. Oh. Okay, what just happened? Oh, damn. Are they... They are playing against... Playing war against each other like for real, for real war. That's crazy. They're killing each other. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. It's like, th th that's no game. They're really killing each other. Yo. They're dancing? Only humans can enjoy killing like that. Only humans or else, or else monsters. Wait. Wait. Adult attack. Adult attack. Okay. Adult attack. Oh, damn. What is the savagery and the imagery here? What? This is supposed to be how adults attack other... <laughs> you know what? I'm done, bro. Adult attack. Like, uh... Like, Jill. Oh, my God. Look at this. They're crazy, bro. It's like, here, have some. Eat, eat. And then the kid turns, and then they turn back into human. Ah, oh, man, this is gruesome, bro. Look at this. Same imagery again. It's like, she won't accept. She won't accept our gift. She hits. She hit hells. Like, why? Isn't she friend? Friend? Isn't she? It's like the moods turned ugly. We best scram, Jill. So they dipping. This is no time to stiffen up. Let's escape. It's like, don't excite him. Slowly. So, <laughs> yo, they dipping. <laughs> it's like, she ran. She ran. The human child ran. Yo, they dipping. It's like, the fog's gotten thick again. The fog's gotten thick again. I can't run anymore. Come on, stand up. Now's our chance while the fog hides us. But in this fog, we don't know which way to go. Didn't think of that. Speaking of, where are we? <laughs> Cocoons. What are what are these? A new kind of fruit. A new kind of fruit? Icky, icky. As the puck is trying to touch it. What the hell are these, bro? I didn't even see this page before. I think I scrolled past it. Oh, damn. Look at all this. Cocoons. 
So I'm guessing they're breeding, bro. What are these? They're breeding. Yep, they're breeding. More demon fairies. It's like something inside it, something icky. Yeah, they're breeding, all right. Yep, they're cocoons. These things hang in here. They're all their cocoons. These are the emergence grounds. Oh, damn. Here comes Rosine. These are the emergence grounds. Where human children are reborn as elves. Oh, so, okay. So that's how they do it. So, Jill, why do you try to run away? It's like, no. Why are you so scared? What did they do to you? Well, I mean, they were killing each other. Oh, you mean playing war? Even humans are always doing that. Oh, all right. Human children are cowards. It's all right if you become an elf. It's not scary. It's fun to go all out. But you die. It's not playing at all. It's really killing your own friends. It's all right. They are new friends soon enough. <laughs> The justification, bro. And it, it just goes to show you that they never really they never really grow up. Even though their kids turn into elves, they never really grow up. Because the way how they think, their mind has not evolved into anything of growth. There's no, there's no adulterated thought process for them. You know what I'm saying? They're still children. I mean, it's really, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's all right. They're new friends soon to come. So you kill you play war kill your friends now in your play war you know what i'm saying like only a kid would think that if you're playing war, like say you're playing um cops and robbers right and you like as a robber unintentionally kills your kill your friend as a kid you're not really going to understand what you did until an adult explains it to you because you can't really look at that person and be like, oh, you're a serial, ki serial killer. They were playing. You know what I'm saying? Or they're going to grow up to kill other people. They were playing. They don't really know. The kid doesn't really know what they did because they were, they were playing. But shit just got too real. But they didn't know that shit got real. You know what I'm saying? Because in their eyes, they're thinking he's not supposed to not get up again. You get what I'm saying? He's supposed to get up. But the kid that took it too far don't understand you know what i'm saying what they did so it's kind of like the same situation here with these elves they don't really know what they did or what they're doing they're still kids you know what i'm saying the funny thing is that we're only playing human this is what rosine is saying we're only playing human yet jill the human hates it so much it's like no it's all wrong says jill you say you don't like playing war but if you go home now, there might be a real human war waiting for you in the future. And that's not all. Hunger, cold, beatings. Remember back when you were small, when we played together, just us? The fun things were always outside the village. Every fun thing is right here. If you become an elf, this is, this is the kind of reasoning that goes through a child's head when they run away from home. You get what I'm saying? Um, and that's the reason why a lot of parents nowadays, they cuddle their kids so much because they don't want them to run away. They don't want them to hate them. They, you know what I'm saying? And it turns out that, you know, if you, when you spare the rod and spoil the child, you don't, the, the statistics, the, the statistics are not good. It's not in favor of the child. So, and, and you guys understand what I'm saying. So like eight so she continues rosine every fun thing is right here if you become an elf everything 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 you have ever imagined okay you know everything you have ever imagined okay so i didn't read this part i was supposed to read this part first let's let's just go over that again that's not all. Hunger, cold beatings. Remember back when you were small, when we played together, just us? The fun things were always outside the village, the forest, the river, our imaginations, outside our real lives. Human villages are full of bad things for human 
children, even the sky. It's okay. I'll make you into an ex extra special elf. Strong, pretty, no one will be able to hurt you. And she hugs her. It's like, ah, uh, don't be scared. You just sleep for a bit. Kinda sleepy. You laugh sweet dreams inside the cocoon. Dreams of flying in the sky. What was it? Oh well, doesn't matter. She's already asleep. It's like, snap out of it, Jill. She's a monster. Ah, you're the one, Peacalf. You gave Jill strange ideas. You gave... Something just happened. Second grab, clap, swish. Oh. What is that? I think I think something got slashed. I think one of the cocoons got slashed. Is this what they look like before they develop? Ew. Jill. She screams out. What's happening is like the cocoons, the elf cocoons on fire. Who's lighting them on fire? Oh, <laughs> he's torching them junks, bro. Like guts, Mr. Swordsman, he's, he's alive. Oh, damn. She's sending her army after him. You know, you already know he gonna pull the sword. You know what I'm saying? Gonna pull the dragon slayer. You know what I'm saying? Pull the dragon slayer. Slash all these dudes. Burning them. <laughs> he looks so savage, bro. <laughs> Every time I see this, these drawings, it's just like, he's so intimidated. I don't know who would want to stand up against him. He's like, Jill, let's take cover now. He's like, yeah. Why? For an instant. For an instant. Swaying inside the blaze, he was the one who looked more like a terrifying monster to me. Wow, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Uh All right, so here we go. Volume 15 in the books. That was really well, well written story wise, well written story. I'm still interested in these new people that showed up that are looking for guts. Um, but for the most part, I really enjoyed, um, I really enjoyed watching, seeing, watching, seeing, um, the transition and the type of person that they're painting our MC as, you know, guts as, um, you know, just this overwhelming power that's very flawed, very flawed. You know what I'm saying? And they couldn't have picked a better name for this for this um, manga. Couldn't have picked a better name than Berserk because it all en encompasses um, Berserk is in is going wild, you know, uncontrolled and sometimes controlled Berserk Berserk going Berserk can be controlled berserk out of control as i've described it during the read through when i was talking about guts is 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 kind of like a controlled madness you know what i'm saying like within him so it's like within all the craziness that you see happening when he's fighting his you know what i'm saying even his name of having guts you know what i'm saying he he encompasses the name you know what i mean of having the guts to do these things over and over again, thinking on the fly. And that's why I said, like, even though it looks like it's craziness, it's all over the place, it's very controlled. So, you know, it's just him. That's who he is. You know what I'm saying? Puck is here for the comic relief, as always, cussing Guts out for, for, for the stuff that he says. But the thing about it, a lot of the stuff that Guts says, I don't really necessarily pay attention to what he's saying. I pay more attention to his actions when he does things because his actions are only are always going to speak louder 
than his actual words when it comes on to how he regards to certain things. You get what I'm saying? So certain things that he says, I do pay attention to, like him apologizing. You know what I'm saying? Like when he apologizes, you really got to pay attention to when he does apologize because he doesn't do it that often because he don't feel like he has to. But I feel like he's just a bundle. He's just a bundle of controlled anger. So he's like, he do, he really don't give a shit. But at the same time, he kind of does. You know what I'm saying? And it just makes for this really conflicting um, story for us as the audience to read through because um, you don't know. You're all you're probably always gonna love his character. But at the same time, there's certain things that are really going to surprise. Did he really just do that? You know what I'm saying? But um, but as I said, it's just very, it's controlled. And as, as I said, Berserk is the perfect name for this manga. You know, now that I'm looking into what the main character represents in this entire, um, thing. Um, also, you know, the situation that's going on in, in, in Misty Valley, man, it's, My opinion, my opinion on it is that, you know, kids who are not allowed to be kids and you can take this. I'm going to be drawing some parallels here because, you know, I've had members of my family, kids that has, you know, wanted to run away goes, you know, I'm like, you know, and most of the times when I say to them, OK, where, where are you planning to go? You know, what I'm saying I have. I don't have any kids of my own I'm talking about my nephews and because they confide in me, they'll call me and be like, Oh, I can't take this house no more because, but I'm saying your mom and your dad, they don't, they don't whoop you. They don't beat you. You just having a dis a disagreement. You get what I'm saying? You're just having a disagreement with your mom or your dad, or they tell you that you can't do something. And because you're adamant, because you feel like you're old enough, you get what I'm saying? You want to run away. Where are you going to run to? Who's going to take care of you? Which parents is going to be? <laughs> whose parents is going to take you in and be like, oh, you could come stay with us. People can't do that. This is America. <laughs> you know, but kids want, they want to be kids and I get it. But at the same time, you also got to, um, you know, um, kids that are in these homes. So let's draw, let's draw this parallel from what's going on in the actual story with these kids right they're in abusive homes no doubt about it they're in abusive homes they both are coming from abusive homes you know what i'm saying rosine and jill they're both in abusive were in abusive homes right um i can understand why rosine wants wants to run away this you know in real life has a general always a very negative impact on kids almost all the times like and it, and it will follow them almost throughout their entire life that abuse right they might turn out to be abusive parents you get what i'm saying so it's you know people who are abused most of the time turn out to be ab abusive to other people you know, and, you know, you probably heard the saying that says hurt people hurt people. You know what I'm saying? And she sacrificed her parents to become the queen of the elves, Rosine, right? She wanted to she wanted to be more than what she is so she, that she can protect her world that she's inherited. So they started eating humans. Now, the things that they do, you can see that she never grew up. She never grew up. Remember, she's older than Jill, right? But she never grew up. She don't understand the concept. Even Jill understands the concept. That's why she she's reluctant to just jump in because she's older. She can think differently now. Regardless of what's going on at home, I can have a bit of an understanding. If this is what you guys are about, you're killing each other for fun and think it's cool. Oh, we're just going to have friends. That could be me. That could be me playing war with you and you kill me talking about, oh, you're going to get a new friend tomorrow. Then we not be, we weren't really friends in the first place. Now, Jill can access that. It seems like these kids are stuck. They're not growing up. They're not becoming adults. They're not, you get what I'm saying? So they're still stuck as kids. Things have that 
that mindset of a child. They still, they're still there. So that's sad, you know? So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if there's going to be some sort of, I, I think Rosine is going to transform into something, you know, formidable that God's going to have to go up against. But I guess we're going to have to wait till the next volume to see this. Um, so we'll see how they conclude that. Um, so yeah, that's about it that I have to say about it. This was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool read through, man. As I said, I'm going to start taking my time to get through these read throughs, man. Um, and just relax and just do them and no rush. So you just got to have to sit, strap in, get ready for the ride, grab your popcorn. When you see this pop up on your screen, grab your popcorn, whatever you eat in. Don't sit down for two hours and not, and, and, and don't. You know what I'm saying? Have something that could carry you through listening to me. You know what I'm saying? If I'm boring to you, you don't have to read to, to listen to my read through, man. But I know you guys are enjoying it. So I'm not talking to you guys who are enjoying it. But anyways, thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this read through, man. If you are here for, for, for the last two hours or so, really do appreciate it. So I want you guys to make sure you comment on this video. Leave a like before you leave and also subscribe if you're still here <laughs> thank you guys so much i appreciate you guys man i do this for y'all i do this for me and my gratitude is never going to be enough for you guys showing up to read this manga with me even though you've already done it and you want to know what my reaction is anyways thank you guys so much i'll catch you guys later peace